Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have a unique opportunity. I found one of these uh, Philips Respironics CPAPs, the ones that got Philips in a lot of trouble. Um, I don't know if this specific model is one of them that did it. Um, however, we're gonna take a deep dive into it and see why exactly was it that people were getting injured from Philips CPAPs. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Okay guys, this one right here is the Philips Respronix Remstar Auto. And there is about 20 different models of Philips CPAPs, BiPAPs, etc., that are currently on recall because they're supposedly hurting people, injuring them. And some of them are very serious injuries when you read through the list. And what is the result is over time, there is supposedly a dampening, a damper dampener or foam that's inside it. Now, I've never taken one of them apart, so I, I've never seen that, but apparently this foam breaks down over time and it off gases. And when it off gases, some of that ends up in the respiratory tract and it dries out and creates respiratory issues for the patients. And I could be wrong, but I think a couple patients might have even died from it. So Philip's got in a lot of trouble for that because uh, from what I've heard, they knew about the problem and they continued on. I'm, that might not be correct, but that is definitely what I've heard. And that also would account for why they got so severely penalized. They, they got penalized quite, quite severely. There's a, a class action lawsuit on it. So anyway, guys, this is a Philips Respironix Remstar Auto. Now, the one I know that's part of the, the recall is Remstar Auto SE. This one isn't the SE version. I have no clue. Um, however, this one definitely doesn't look that old. I mean, it's clearly been used. I have no idea what I'm gonna find when I open it up, but that's what uh, that's why we're doing this, right? So let's go ahead and check it out. Um, from first look, it is DC powered, and all I can normally see are two, what are they, torques down here at the sides? All right, T10, there we go. So I got two fasteners down here that are two T10s. Again, I've never opened one of these up before, so. I have no clue if I'm even opening them up correctly. Uh, now, the reason that they have the foam in there is to dampen out the sound, the resonance of the unit. And that sound, it helps you sleep, you know, by, by dampening it out. Oh, uh, look at this. Looky, looky. What do we got? So I've got one fastener on the main board. That's cool. Right here. And let's see, I've got a regular uh, rotary encoder. Ah, look at this, I had no idea. Um, so this is the programming card, and this is what your physician or whatnot would uh, program according to your specific needs. And let's see, it looks like it's attached to a daughter board. Yep, it is. Nice, okay. Again, I have no idea if this is one of the units that's actually in the recall. There is a um, socketed, battery. I hate when they socket a battery like that because that means that you have to desolder it and you're going to lose your settings, your time and all that. I hate when they do that. There's your main CPU on the bottom of the board. Pretty cool. Now here are uh, some, I think these are current shunt, shunt resistors. I'm pretty sure of it. And that would make these probably the motor drivers. You know, they pulse in order to drive your motor, create the speed. And uh, interesting, I, I would always thought that there was pressure monitoring. Mm, okay, right here. So here's your transducers. Looks like we got three different transducers down here. Interesting, DC input. Got some nice capacitors on there. Looks like it's a, overall a pretty good board, man. Really good. I mean, not saying Philips doesn't know how to make electronics. I mean, they clearly do. So, um, hmm. Okay, so this here is, just fits in there. I've got a couple clips that release the fan motor. I can see that right down here. There's one clip and there's a second one. So it looks like this panel here has got to pull out. Looks like this panel here pulls out. There we go. I don't see any foam that they're talking about. So maybe that's why this one wasn't on the recall. No idea. 
Um, hmm. Okay, so the standoffs and everything are hard. I would have thought they'd be rubber because that would add to the dampening effect. Oh, there's the foam. I see it down inside it. So whether or not this unit is directly affected by the recall, I don't know, but I do see the foam. Okay, let's see, how do we get this off? Well, I'm gonna take out these perimeter screws. And those perimeter screws, all they do is hold the clamshell together. So I'm gonna set that one off to the side. Clearly that's not it. There's some plastic latches here, 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 and here. They all have to be released. Need a good flat blade screwdriver. There we are. Yep, there it is. Okay, so you can pull up on the pump while releasing those plastic snaps. Phillips always has some interesting engineering. Unlike any other medical device out there, they always have really fascinating engineering. And that includes how they hold their products together. In this case, they got these plastic snaps, which never seen that before. Let's see, do they have some, whoop, do they have some hidden fasteners underneath the, the feet? Nope. And nope. Often underneath the rubber feet, there will be hidden fasteners and also under the label. So I just use your nail to kind of scratch the label and see if there's a pocket that's hidden. I've got none of that, none of it at all. This motor should be ready to pop out. Come on, big girl, let's go, let's do it. All right, all right. Okay, so it looks like this plate right here is keeping the motor from popping out. And I wanna say that there's a fastener holding it in because it's clearly being held in really well. And I don't wanna break it. No fasteners, no, no. Yep, see this plate. Just sits in there, so it's being held in by this. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. When in doubt, let's pull out some more fasteners. We'll pull apart the the blower assembly. I'm pretty sure this is not how you take it apart, but I mean, if it comes apart, then we've achieved our purpose. So it's in a clear. Uh, what is it? Uh, is it PA six? I can see the push pin mark, so it is injection molded. Click, click, clear. Okay, so we're just going to pull the upper part off. There we go. There it is. Okay, like I said, that is not how you normally take this out. That's okay. Because our goal is just to take it apart and take a look at the foam anyway. How cool is this? This little blower motor. Got a floating rubber gasket. You see that? How neat is that? So again, it's got dampening to isolate the blower from the circuit so that the whole machine doesn't resonate. Very cool. I'm gonna use that for one of my uh, other projects. There is a gasket that goes all the way around in a low crevice. And down here in the bottom, we have some sockets for the pins for the motor to float on. So these are isolating sockets which allow the motor to float around. And let's see. So that really does release this panel. I should be able to pull up on the panel. There we go, okay. All right, maybe that was the correct way to take it apart after all. So here's your pigtail. And I see the foam. I wonder if that's the foam that is in question. <clears throat> it's really kind of held in there pretty well. What am I missing? There's no other hidden fasteners. Here's, here's part of the foam right here. So that would be your air induction. That's your filter. There's no fasteners in there. Hmm. Okay, okay. There it is. Okay, so here's your lower blower assembly and those rubber sockets. And look at this. Here is some dampener foam. And how crazy is this? 
So there's multiple reasons why there's a recall. One of them is because this foam uh, tends to build up bacteria and because it builds up bacteria, um, it also is, is a biological hazard, you know? But I can tell you that this foam is kind of sticky, which means it is breaking down. So on this side, nice and smooth, look at this side where it's facing all the contaminants. You can see like wave patterns where there is clearly some sort of contamination. And when it's discolored like this, it is breaking down. So I do not know if this is a unit that is on the recall. I would definitely assume it is. But this right here is clear evidence that this foam, it is maybe a little sticky. It is breaking down 100%. And there is some discoloration in the bottom tray where the foam was sitting. So, wow, this actually probably was one of the problematic units. Cool stuff. So, this right here has cost the company millions of dollars, this little piece of foam, because it degrades and apparently it, you know, gets sucked into the motor. Hmm. But I, from the looks of it, it looks like they did a pretty good job on isolating things. I don't know. There we go. Okay. Well, the blower is a huge win because uh, this guy right here is a, um, no, I don't see the voltage rating. It does have, what, four cables? Three cables? So it might be a three-phase motor. Hmm. We'll have to check that out. Okay. And then these two right here might be for a speed sensor. I'll check that out in another video as well. Cool stuff. All right. Now let's go to the second piece. This one right here. So this should be a humidifier, right? I mean, the reservoir kind of gives that away. So I guess that this one here would be a humidifier. And I'm looking for any obvious ways of opening it up. No obvious ways that I can see. There's a little latch right here. That's cool. Hmm. And I see some plastic tabs right here and right here. That's cool. Okay, so the, the, those are for a filter? Right? Hmm. Okay, so that's a release. This is a release to release it from the main body. Again, let's check for the hidden fasteners. None. 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 Okay. So this guy is completely held together with snaps. Yeah. That's maybe a little aggravating. Okay. So let's take a look. Here's the lid. Right here is the spot where you breathe the humidified air. And let's see if I can release this lid. There it is. So there's two little captive notches right here that ride in this groove. And look at that, there's my humidifier tray. Nice. All right. And this humidifier tray, here's where it has what, an in inductive heater or a pan, just a regular pan. Uh, I would assume that that's inductive. Like it creates an induction into the metal surface right here and that directly influences the temperature of the water bath. Anyway, uh, okay, so right here I got some sediment. So this guy's clearly used and contaminated. And this guy's kind of simple, kind of simple. So right here is a Molex connector that goes into the heater assembly, which is in the base. Of course, we're going to take it apart. Of course. Nope. And this one right here. Wow, those fasteners are very loose. That's interesting. And why not? Let's go ahead and take the top ones apart too. So that we can see everything that's going on in this guy. interesting when you start working on European designed equipment, they start using a lot of Torx and hex and socket cap screws. Um, you know, it, United States designed items do not do that. Okay, so right here is this guy and I've got two more fasteners on the top. Notice how I'm just pulling on the tray a little bit. Whenever you have a cover, you don't exactly know how it comes apart. 
just pull on it a little bit and see where the flexing stops. And a lot of times, especially when it's um, cheaper plastics, much easier. So here is definitely a Phillips type of design. See how they got these decorative side panels? Completely unnecessary. However, they exist. They just slide in. Yep, they're ABS plastic. <laughs> I, this probably whole thing is ABS. All right, so you can see that that guy there. Now see how, when I'm talking about when I pull things apart, see how I got the fasteners out that I can see? Put a little pressure on it and you can see that down here at the side, somehow it's being held. So I've got this assembly right here, which is my induction where the air comes in from the blower. And I am thinking that there's going to be a fastener underneath it that's hidden. Okay, so it's, it's sitting in like a T-track. Hmm, okay. It almost looks like this guy right here is part of it. I don't know how. Don't know how. Oh, okay. So, man, Phillips are just some geniuses when it comes to putting stuff in. So, this guy here does sit in a T track, and there's a little tiny notch right here. And if I put my screwdriver in and just lift it down, it releases this module. And this module, I don't know what it's really for. It, it does create a buffer, a reservoir. Is it a water trap for humidity? Like to make sure that no water maybe goes back into the blower for some reason. Let's say if you tilt the unit and uh, somehow water gets into the system. Maybe this is a water trap. That's what I, it's, it's hollow, ABS plastic. And here's that hidden fastener I was talking about, guys. All right, so it's, it's holding the power port. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it's holding the power port and also the heater. And again, I wonder if that's an induction heater. Ah, look at it, it's embedded, it's got um, epoxy. So if this was an induction heater, um, then it would just have a coil in there and it would, you know, pulse electricity, which would excite the pan, which is, <laughs> it's hidden here someplace. <laughs> But it also has a heat guard down here and a little bit of an isolator. You see that, how it's spring-loaded? So this is a heat guard to protect the ABS plastic on the bottom. Interesting design. And this right here is that release that releases it from the main body. Kind of cool. Interesting stuff. There's what, three wires going into it? Yep. Okay. Well, there we go. That is the inside of a Philips CPAP. And um, here is the problematic foam. Anyway, guys, there you have it. That is the Philips CPAP. And this is the problematic foam. And you can see the discoloration and it's already starting to break down. So whether or not this one was on the recall, definitely something to be cognizant of because usually if you have one manufacturer of a common component like your foam, you're going to get it from one manufacturer and source it from one place because it's usually cheaper and you can maintain quality control. Guys, there it is. Uh, just a quick deep dive into uh, the inner workings of a CPAP and humidifier. But um, if you guys got one of these units, check out online. There is an active recall on about 20 different CPAPs and BiPAPs. Not good, guys. So look out for your friends and family as well. Thanks for watching.